morning, we're going to uh, discuss the altar of incense, the altar of incense. And, I, and I'm going to read, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 5 and uh, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Can you all hear me? All right, yes. James chapter 5, verse 16. Can, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. You're good. James chapter 5 and verse 16. I read that quickly. James chapter 5, and verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that uh, you may be healed. The effective prayer of the righteous man can accomplish much. Now, watch this. Now, we looked at that. It says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Remember that God is emphasizing that. He wants us to know that Elijah was just a human being, but his prayers were effective. You see, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its free fruit. Don't forget the reason why the sky poured rain because God did it. But Elijah's prayers went up to God. And so he was a righteous man that had outward success. And so remember what we talked about the word avail is, is to be able to be of strength, to be robust, to be of force. And so the prayers of Elijah were, had strength. It was a force. God heard it because he was a righteous man. Man, and don't forget what we discuss is um, God wants us to be righteous because God wants to hear our prayers. And, and when we are obedient to God, God is going to uh, hear our prayers and he's going to take action. And so I want you to remember uh, what we talked about just now as we look at the altar of incense. Now, remember, uh, the altar of incense is it, this is what it. Just listen. It says the incense which was which 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 offered on the altar is associated with the prayers of the saints. Okay, so the incense was offered on the altar. The incense which was altered on offered on the altar uh, is associated with the prayers of the saints. Uh, now listen. When the priests went to the altar of incense, they put the incense of the fire. They put the incense of the fire and the smoke from the incense went up to God, which represented the praise of the saints. OK, so when the priest went to the altar of incense, they put the incense of the fire and the smoke from the incense went up to God, which represented the prayers of the saints. Now, watch. Notice the location once more. Notice the location of the altar of incense. As we talked about before. The location of the altar, altar of incense was in front of the Holy of Holies, was in front of it, or rather you can say the Holy of Holies or the Most Holy. It was also, uh, it, it was also the place of God. It's, it's the place of God. But I want to emphasize that again, the altar of incense was not a place in the Holy of Holies. It was in front of the Holy of Holies. It was in the holy place, which it, remember there was the holy place and then there was the veil. And behind the veil was the most holy or the holy of holies. And the altar of incense was in front of the veil, which represented the praise of the saints. Now, watch this, Exodus chapter 30, verse 6. And you shall put uh, this altar in front of the veil that is near the ark of the testimony in front of the mercy seat that is over the ark of the testimony where I will meet you. See that? You shall put this altar in front of the veil. Not behind it, in front of it. Notice what God says at the end of this verse. Where I will meet you. It was the place of God. Watch. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 2. Leviticus 16 and verse 2. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, your brother, not to come at any time into the holy place inside the veil. Remember, Aaron was the high priest. And the high priest was only allowed to go in the holy place behind the veil once a year. He said before the mercy seat that is on the ark. Remember, the mercy seat was the lid. It was on top of the ark. So that, why? So that he may not die. He was only allowed in once a year, but after he made the necessary sacrifice for his sins. He said, for I will, watch this, for I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat. So the holy of holies or the most holy was a place of God. 
And notice what I said. The altar of incense was not inside the Holy, Holy of Holies. It was in front of the Holy of Holies. It was in front of the veil. Now watch this. Very interesting. Remember, the high priest went in there once a year. So it's like the high priest brought the, brought the prayers of the people of God to the throne of God once a year. So the prayers were brought in to the throne of God. And that's what he did when he went in there. He brought those prayers in there. Very interesting. Now notice Leviticus 16 and verse 12. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 12. And he shall take a fire pan full of coals of fire from upon the altar before the Lord and two hands, watch this, and two handfuls of finely ground sweet incense and bring it inside the veil. See, he was the only one. And bring it inside the veil. I like that. So the prayers were brought in. Notice uh, Luke chapter 1. Notice Luke chapter 1. Let's go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 and verse 8. Watch this. And so the high priest brought the prayers of the saints. He took them inside. He, he went behind that veil. He went to the place of God. He took those prayers in there. So notice how, again, I want you to get this point. You have the altar of incense that was uh, in front of the veil, it wasn't behind. It was not placed behind the veil, and so the prayers had to be taken into the place of God. So there's still a separation there. I want you to understand that there's still a separation. Prayers are extremely important to God. We study God's word. Uh, we understand God, and, and we communicate with God through prayer. And God loves the communication. Therefore, all he requires is that we obey his word, be obedient to him. He said, be holy for I am holy. I want you to understand that. And so God is holy. He's in the most holy place. He's saying, be holy in all your behavior. Say, be holy in all your behavior for I am holy. Why? Because he wants to communicate with us. He wants our prayers to mean something. He wants our prayers to be effective. And so we have to do our part, which is to be obedient to him. Notice Luke chapter 1. I love this. Luke chapter 1 and verse 18. Notice Zacharias. Luke chapter 1 and verse 18. And Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? Uh, how shall I know this for certain? For I am old, I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angels answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. And I have sent uh, to to speak to you and to bring uh, good news uh, to you. You see that? Now, let's go to verse eight. Uh, let's we can deal with that later. Let's go to verse eight. This is what I want you to see. Verse eight. He said, "Now it came about while he was performing his priestly service before God. See, he's performing his priestly service before God. He was not he wasn't a high priest. He's a priest." Uh, in the appointed order of his division. And remember David, the 24 positions in the priesthood. And so it was his turn to do what he uh, had to do. He said, according to the custom of the priestly office, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. There we go. He's burning incense, right? That represented the praise of the saints. And the whole multitude, notice this, and the whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside. They were outside. They were outside. Now, I want you to understand something. When Elijah, or rather Zacharias, uh, went inside the holy place, he stopped at the veil. He was not allowed to go behind the veil. And so it's like he's praying. He's doing what he does at the altar of incense. And, and, and the smoke is going up, which represents the prayers of the saints, but he had to stop. The high priest was allowed to go in once a year. Uh, after that, or before that, he had to stop. When his time came up to go in, he was allowed to go in. When he came out, he had to stop. And so I want you to grasp that. Uh, Zacharias, stop. I want you to uh, picture, picture that in your mind. Picture the veil, this huge curtain and this this altar ventures is beef is right there in front of the veil and as he's as he's uh 
doing his duty, he stops. He cannot go uh, behind the veil. That's where the presence of God was. See, at the same time, when he's in the holy place, the first part, the people are outside praying. Verse 10, and the whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside at the hour of the incense offering. So you see how that works? Now watch this. Watch the connection. See, remember, we know that according to Hebrews, I want you to turn to uh, the book of Hebrews. No, let's go to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. And let's look at verse 50. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Notice how this ties in. Remember, these were copies for us. It's according to Hebrews, the old covenant, the things in the old covenant was a shadow. A shadow is leading to something. A shadow is not the real thing. It's leading to the real thing. And so those things were leading to the real thing. What is the altar of incense leading to? What, is, what does God want us to see? Our prayers are extremely important. Now watch how it ties in. And so I have to go here in Matthew chapter 27 to uh, help us appreciate the altar of incense. Look at verse 50 of Matthew chapter 27. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He died. When he died, the Bible says, behold, the veil of the temple uh, was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook. And the rocks were split. Now, according to, uh, I guess, historical background, they say this temple that existed during this time, the veil was like uh, 70 feet high. And they said it was like three or four feet thick. And so I want you to I want you to imagine that, that the strong, how thick the veil was and how high it was. And they said when they, if they moved, it, it took many, many people to move it. And you see the power of God here, that the veil of the temple was torn in two from uh, top to bottom. Very interesting. And the earth shook and the rocks were split. That's the power of God. And the tombs were opened and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. You see? I like verse 54. Now the centurion and those who were with him keeping guard over Jesus when they saw the earthquake and the things that were happening became very frightened and said, truly, this was the son of God. See, confirmed his deity right there. But I want you to see this. That veil was torn from top to bottom. You notice when it was torn, verse 50 and Jesus cried out again and with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He died. And when he died, it's like heaven was open. See, notice that verse 50, he dies. Verse 51, behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Remember what we talked about. The veil separated the holy place from the holy of holies or the most holy. And the holy of holies, or we can say the most holy, was a place of God. And so what it's saying here, that heaven is now open. Christ sacrificed his sins. God was satisfied, well appeased. He was well pleased. And now heaven is heaven is now open. Let's look at that. Let's, let's just look at that. Go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. Watch, let's do this quickly. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. But when Christ appeared as high priest for the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacles, not made with hands. That is to see, that is to say, not of this creation. See? It's heaven. Look at verse 23 and 24 of Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 23 and 24 of Hebrews chapter 9. Therefore, it was necessary for the copies, watch this, therefore, it was necessary for the copies of the things in, in, in the heavens to be cleansed with these, but the heavenly things themselves, which better sacrifices than these. Well, look at verse 24. For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one. See, that was a copy of the true one. That's heaven. See, but 
into, listen, listen to this, but into heaven itself, now appearing in the presence of God for us. He's sitting on the right hand of God. And so now watch this. Chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 19. Chapter 10 and verse 19. Since, therefore, brethren, we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. So now heaven is open for us. The relationship has now changed. Remember, we all have sinned and have fallen short. Uh, we all have sinned. We have fallen short from the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So all mankind, everyone, we all have sinned. So the, the law that Moses, the law of Moses, people, the Jews who are under the law broke that law. The Gentiles on the patriarchal law, they broke that law. We are under the we are under the Christian dispensation. And so all have sinned. There's a separation. Your sins have separated you from your God. Isaiah said that in Isaiah chapter 59. And so because of the blood of Christ, because of that great sacrifice, now heaven is wide open. That's why the veil was split from top to bottom. Heaven is wide open. Why? Because of the blood of Christ. That sacrifice appeased the mind of God. He was, it was the propitiation. He said, well, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. See that? And since we have a great priest over the house of God, where's, where's the great priest? He's in the heavens. And so now, now watch what it now. This what I want. This this is what I want to show you. Let let me take you where the veil is. Let me show you where the veil is. So now heaven is wide open. Now remember, let's go to Revelation chapter eight. You know me. Let's go to Revelation chapter eight. Watch. Let me let me show you where the veil is, or rather, not the veil. Excuse, let me show you where the altar of incense is. Sorry. Let me show you where. The altar of incense is located. Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. Let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And when they had broke the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. We went over this text. We're not going to go over it right now, but we've discussed chapter eight. And I saw the, listen, I saw the seven angels who stand before God and the seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel came, came and stood at the altar. Whoa, watch. So now notice that. Now I want you to grasp this. I want you to get this. We just read in the old covenant. When God introduced the altar to us, it was not in his presence. Remember, the Holy of Holies was the place of God and the altar was before the veil, which was not in his presence. Now, after Jesus did what he does, what he did, he sacrificed uh, our sins. He obeyed the plan of God and God accepted that sacrifice. Now, heaven is wide open and it's, it's open for the obedient. Now, we get to Revelation. The ones who are victorious in Christ were the ones who followed the lamb, the ones who obeyed his word, even in the face of death. Now, notice because they were righteous, notice where the altar is. The altar of incense is now spiritually with God. See, it's over. And so, in other words, our prayers are with God. Our prayers are extreme. They have been strong in the past, but now they are extremely strong. Let's read again verse 2 of chapter 15 of Revelation chapter 8. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and the seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar holding a golden censer. See that? See that? Read it again. And another angel came and stood at the altar holding a golden censer, and much incense was given to him that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. I want you to catch it, please. Notice where the altar of incense is. It's before the throne. It's right there with God. See? Before Christ, it was on the outside. 
after Christ is now on the inside. Notice verse 4. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. See? See? And the angel took the censer and filled it with, it's interesting as you look at this, the angel is now the priest. It's almost like Christ is the high priest and the angel is doing what the priest would do. It's a different priesthood. It's very interesting when I saw this. It's, you know, remember, the priest would go into the holy place. Remember, Zach, uh, Zacharias was the priest, and he was the one to do what it needed to be done as related to the altar of incense. Now you see the angel doing it. It's, 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 it's in the heavenly realm. See, it's not physical. And he took this censer and he filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. See, where, where, why did he throw it to the earth? Because this is in heaven. And there follow pearls, uh, uh, pearls of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and judgment. And the seven angels were, had, who had seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. And watch this. And the first sounded, and there came hell and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Now, what I want you to see here, what I want you to see here is that notice the strength, the power of prayer. Notice that. The strength and the power of prayer. The, the, the outward success of prayer. I'm going to close after this one, and then we're going to continue next week. I want to show you how this relates to more about how we must be righteous as it relates to our prayers. But notice that the altar is now with God. The prayers of the saints who are righteous are being heard by God, not just being heard. They're going to receive an outward success like Elijah. And that's what happens. Again, I want you to see the outward success. And the angel, first five, the angel took the censer and he filled it with the with the fire and the altar and threw it to the earth. And there follow pails of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightnings. That's judgment. And 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 an earthquake, that's judgment. And the angels and the seven angels who had seven trumpets uh, prepared themselves to sound them. Here comes judgment. And the first sound that there came hail and fire mixed with blood and they were thrown to the earth and a third of the earth was burned up and the third of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up, etc. See, God heard the prayers of the saints. God saw how the saints were treated. Not only is God listening, but God is taking action. He has a power to take action. But notice, as we discussed, when God takes action, it's very interesting. His action, remember, I want you to see this before I shut down. And he says, verse 7, and the first sound, and the first sounded, and there were came hell and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third, third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Notice God is still doing things to convince the enemies of him to repent. So the ones who are being persecuted, God still wants them to repent. And he's using his judgment to do that. And so the prayers are praying to God. The saints are praying to God. Their, their, their prayers are so powerful that God is taking action. He's using that judgment because you reap what you sow. But also, he's trying to convince them to repent. And while he's trying to convince them to repent, repent, the saints suffer. So understand, our prayers are extremely powerful. During this time of the this pandemic, we must pray for the nation. It's not time to tell jokes about the nation. It's not time to make fun of the leadership. It's time to pray. It, it's not time to not get along with each other. It's not time to talk about one another or put one another down. It's time to, uh, to mend relationships. It's time to do whatever we must do concerning our sins to, to make things right with God so our prayers will be heard. We'll continue next week uh, on this subject, lifting up holy hands. First Timothy chapter two and verse eight. If anyone this morning needs to make things right with God, please don't hesitate. Please. 
We need all prayers, all prayers. Please don't be selfish. Make things right with God. Those who are listening and who start listening maybe later, uh, look at our website at uh, scurrychurchofchrist.org. If you have any questions or you like a Bible study, uh, church of scurrychurchofchrist.org. Email us and send us information and we will get back with you and do our best to answer any questions you may have. We're going to sing this song for the invitation. If anyone needs help and any, anyone needs anything, please let you know as we stand, as we sing. Jesus, the loving shepherd, calleth thee now to come into the fold of safety where there is rest and room. Come in the strength of manhood, come in the morn of youth. Enter the fold of safety, enter the way of truth. Lovingly, tenderly calling is he, wander, wander, come unto me. Patiently waiting, there standing I see, Jesus my shepherd divine. Lingering is but folly, wolves are abroad today. Seeking the sheep who are straying, seeking the lambs to slay. Jesus the loving shepherd, calleth thee now to come. Enter the fold of safety, where there is rest and room. Lovingly, tenderly calling is he, wander, wander, come unto me. Patiently waiting, there standing I see, Jesus, my shepherd divine. Thank you, David. Thank you, Curtis, for the lesson today. We had some minor uh, technical difficulties with Skype. We did look on their website, and it was Skype itself. It's nothing that we have done. So uh, so no one worried about that. Technical difficulties are easy to solve. We just have to be patient with them. Thank you for all who have attended today. Once again, if anybody has any needs, please uh, just make yourself known. Uh, Unmute your, unmute your mic and just uh, let us know what your needs are now. I, hang, I see nothing, I hear nothing, so if anyone does have anything that needs arise during the week, please let us know, the Group Me app, or contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org. You can email us at church at scurrychurchofchrist.org. Uh, please uh, direct anybody that you know uh, to our website, and they can, they can view uh, our, our lessons and articles online. So uh, please continue to do so. With that, we hope everybody has a wonderful Lord's Day. It's a beautiful day. Uh, please uh, enjoy and continue to pray to God that this pandemic would end. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody the next time we meet. At this time, we'll call upon Alvin to lead us in a closing prayer. Now we pray.